What's up, everyone? Welcome to Nine Nerd Yards. This episode of Atlanta was surely a classic. Last week, we were tripping through time, space, and Amsterdam with Al in a journey of self-discovery. But this week, Atlanta came white black with a, another anthology episode that had a lot of sneaky references and Easter eggs that I'm gonna break down in this video. But before we grab our pencils and start making some beats, I just want to say thank you for helping me reach 4,000 subscribers. Thank you so much. Join the Discord where we've been taking the discussion to another level. Um, Follow me on Twitter, but for now, now, let's get into the episode. Episode 9, Rich Wigga, Poor Wigga, starts us off in a high school kid's room while he plays video games. The episode is fully in black and white, and we are cleverly introduced to Aaron through his souvenirs and decoration he keeps around his room. He's got some manga, a Funko Pop, and some baseball medals, and we pan over to a Post Malone poster, a pair of Nikes, a horror comic poster of a demon on fire, and a 2016 Logan Paul comedy tour jersey. It's the Logan Paul comedy tour that got me. Why would you willingly go to that and buy a jersey and hang it up? There's also a picture of Aaron and his friends. Under that, there seems to be a vinyl of Donald Glover's album Camp, or should I say Childish Gambino's album, because there is a big difference in style from when Donald released music as childish. Aaron is playing a video game where the objective is to run around with a flamethrower to burn up the enemy team. He's doing well, but the enemy team accuses him of camping. You only won because you camping. We play for real. You only won because you camping. I don't know. This win looks pretty real to me. I think this line is dope because if you don't know about online gaming, camping is when you sit and wait to attack until it becomes convenient to you, or you just wait until someone comes to you so you can ambush them. So the people online are telling him that he's not really playing the game like they do. And that's the attitude that Aaron carries with him throughout the episode. Aaron has taken all the trash talking in stride until he gets a text from his girlfriend letting him know she got accepted into her school of choice. And clearly this is a main inner conflict for Aaron because this is not happy news for him. So he puts a hard R back in gamer. He's dropping the N word and makes monkey noises into the mic. That's the old Modern Warfare 2 lobbies. Kids today have no idea. Honestly, whenever I encounter that type of thing in online gaming, it's a telltale sign that that person isn't smart enough to think of any other jokes. After he rage quits, he gets on his laptop to check the financial aid section of the Arizona State College website. So clearly, he doesn't know where he's going to get the money to actually go to that school. And in the other tab that's open on his laptop, it says flamethrower. So he definitely got fire on his mind. From there, we are introduced to a title card that all of the anthology episodes come with, and there's a bit of significance to this title. I was thinking of two things. My first thought was the book Rich Dad, Poor Dad. Rich Dad, Poor Dad is authored by Robert Kiyosaki. It is about his two father figures growing up, his real father, who is poor, and the father of his best friend, who is rich, and the ways in which both men shaped his thoughts about money and investing. That's a clear connection with this episode, as it's shown that Aaron is biracial and has a black father. While he's passing as white, he still finds finds himself dealing with a class issue of just not having money while his friends don't seem to worry about it. My second thought on the title was Jay-Z's song, The Story of OJ. It has a fantastic video that is also in black and white and features the brilliant line, I'm not black, I'm OJ. Okay. And I wish I can play the chorus of the song for y'all without YouTube putting a hit on my head. I'll just show you the lyrics because I really feel like it's just the plot of this whole episode. Just listen to the song if you haven't. The song is genius and is probably one of the best tracks Hove has released in the last 10 years. The next day, Aaron is getting dropped off at his school by his dad. On the radio, there's a report about a young black kid getting shot by the police when he reached over for his phone. 15 year old black male was killed last night in a routine traffic stop in the Lenox Mall parking lot. Officers thought the young man in the back seat was reaching for a weapon that turned out to be a phone. They fired five shots into the car. And Aaron is unfazed, but his dad is saying that's why he doesn't want Aaron running around with his friends and getting himself into that type of situation. But Aaron says he doesn't think he has that problem. And we come to see that he definitely doesn't have that problem. But I also think that this line is a Jay-Z reference because listen to how he says it. Them cops are looking for a reason to kill young black men. I don't think I have that problem, but okay. I'm not black, I'm OJ. But, okay. but Aaron shows his ignorance more and says that the kid probably did something wrong that warranted it. Like, bro, come on. Aaron also isn't worried about it because he can never borrow the car and his dad can't afford to get him a new car. He's only getting a Golden Corral dinner for his graduation. Aaron asks him if he took a look at his financial aid, but his dad lets him know that he ain't signing up for any loans and Aaron is going to have to get a scholarship and save up. Aaron has managed to save up 4K, but a year at ASC is 50K. How much you say? Four thousand dollars. See, that ain't bad. A year at ASC is fifty thousand dollars. Woo! <laughs> Damn, <laughs> not too bad, son. 
And yeah, honestly, American student debt is out of control. How do we even justify saddling teenagers with that type of debt at that age? Fuck student loans, y'all. Aaron is dropped off at his school, Stonewall Jackson High School. Stonewall Jackson was a Confederate general. Recently, there has been a big push to change the name of schools and institutions that are named after Confederate leaders and to tear down their statues. Can someone explain to me why the hell you would even want a Confederate statue or have institutions named after Confederate generals like that? Y'all do understand that the confederates were a bunch of fucking losers that believed slavery was a god-given right and i really don't want to hear all of that it's my heritage shit either because honestly the confederacy was only a thing for like four years and i got t-shirts that have lasted longer than your fucking heritage fuck out of here when aaron gets dropped off at school his dad gives him a i love you aaron what i love you god i know and I thought I was so smart when I saw this moment because to me, I was thinking it was a sneaky into the Spider-Verse connection. I love you, Miles. Yeah, I know, Dad. See you Friday. You gotta say I love you back. Dad, are you serious? I wanna hear it. You wanna hear I me love say you, Dad. But I noticed that a few people on Reddit and Elliot over at the Movie Files YouTube channel made that connection already. The connection being that Brian Tyree Henry plays Miles' father in that movie. And Miles' uncle, the Prowler, is named Aaron. But Aaron even learns how to do the hey by the end of the episode. Hey. Okay, then. Aaron gets to school and all his friends and his girl are super excited because they all got accepted to college and are trying to make plans with Aaron, but clearly he hasn't let his friends know about his situation and he won't be able to pay for the school that they want to go to. But over the intercom, all the seniors are called to the auditorium for a special announcement by a Mr. Robert S. Lee, played by the late Kevin Samuels. And Kevin Samuels actually just passed away a week before this episode aired. He was a controversial figure in the black community, and while I definitely don't want to speak ill of the man, I don't know know him or his heart, how he was to his friends and family. However, he was a public figure and his opinions were on full display. So I will critique the advice he gave on his YouTube channel about the black community. It's trash, trash opinions. I really don't like it. I think the best way to describe his advice is antiquated and just problematic. Even the tagline for this episode mentioned this rhetoric. Why do they hate black women so much? But all of that to say, Kevin Samuel's performance in this episode is top tier good. And he probably delivers some of the funniest lines of the season as Robert Shea Lee. When he introduces himself to speak to the seniors, he comes out to loose ends hanging on a string. It's a 80s jam by a British R&B group. I wish I could play it without YouTube trying to take my firstborn, but Robert comes out and introduces himself and he's got his two homies picking him up from the side of the stage like Ern and Darius. Robert explains to the kids that he is now the heir to a hair moisturizing company. Some of y'all out there would have hair as dry as a Texas wildfire if it wasn't for my family. Robert actually used to go to Stonewall Jackson High School, so Robert wants to make a big donation to the school and have it renamed after him, which is just ridiculous because Robert E. Lee is another Confederate general and was basically the all-out leader of the Confederate. Going from Stonewall Jackson to Robert S. Lee just had me face palming. but this is when Robert delivers the funniest line because the kids start going nuts when he says he'll be paying all of the seniors tuition, but with one exception. I am going to pay you every single senior's college tuition. <laughs> Who's black? Just seeing Aaron's face sink like that made me laugh my ass off, but this says a lot about Aaron. Why isn't he celebrating? Aaron clearly doesn't view himself as black. By the end of the school day, they are already taking down the Stonewall Jackson name, and Aaron and all of his friends are talking about the injustice of the situation. I feel like we can sue them for discrimination. I mean, this is what they did to black people in the 50s, right? I just don't understand why you would even need to do that. I mean, they already go to school for free. Wait, since when? Aaron says that it must not be easy for black people to go to college if you're black and poor. So you can see that Aaron is starting to switch up. Now that being black could pay his way, it looks like he's really having some conflict with how he views himself. And it's also clear that Aaron's friends don't seem to know that his father is black and that Aaron is biracial. Aaron's girlfriend gives an example of the one black guy she knows that got a full ride for playing basketball, and it's Zion Williamson. He's probably gonna stay in school for one year and then go straight to the NBA. Yeah. Oh yeah, I remember now. Zion Wilson. Williams. 
assassin. Aaron excuses himself, telling his friends that he's going to talk to the counselor about financial aid, but he's really on his way to go talk to Robert about getting his tuition paid. Come to find out that Robert is selecting who is getting a tuition check by having black auditions. So we got a bunch of kids practicing their act, harmonizing If I Ever Fall In Love by the 90s R&B group Shy, and they actually sound good as hell. Hopefully YouTube won't break my knees by playing this clip. The very first time that I saw your brown eyes we got some other kids braiding each other's hair and dancing but we also get an awesome easter egg that someone on twitter pointed out to me these kids are recreating the album cover of outcast stinkonia amazing so aaron is walking around confused and some kid breaks down what's going on he doesn't believe that ados necessitates blackness he's really talking about the culture of black in America. It's a nuanced discussion. Could you wave check me? Just Another kid comes out with a check and Aaron is called into the auditorium. They actually call him Redbone and he saunters into the gym. Hey! Redbone! Yeah, you! I really love this shot. Robert is joined as a judge with his two homies. One of his homies is actually played by George Wallace, an Atlanta native that you may have seen on TV shows like The Fresh Prince or Moesha, but George also had a small role as the mayor in Batman Forever. I should also mention that Aaron is actually played by Tyreek Wither, who was also big on YouTube like Kevin Samuels. Aaron steps up to the tribunal, and the first thing he is asked is, Name me six things that mix with Hennessy. And that's like the 1,000th time this show has mentioned Hennessy. They also ask him what happened to the boy at the mall, referring to the one we heard got shot on the radio. And Aaron explains what happened. Police officer killed him in a routine traffic stop. But the right answer is, I said, what happened to that boy at Lennox Mall? And the answer was, mm-mm. Damn mm. shame. <clears throat> And that is a genius line because it actually is a question regarding your stance and empathy for the situation, something that Aaron already expressed that he doesn't have. Aaron is asked a lot of questions to test his quote unquote blackness. We hear one of the responses to an unknown question is the price is on the can. The price is on the can. This is a reference to season one, episode seven, during a fake commercial break about the price of Arizona iced tea being over 99 cents when the price is on the can. Inflation is real, guys. But my favorite test is take this pencil. Go make a beat on that table. I really wish they would have shown that part. We all know that white people can drum their ass off. That's not even a question. But you already know who's making beats with a pencil in class. Aaron doesn't pass the test. Well, my dad's black. I'm gonna have him come here and then I'll give him the scholarship. Mm -hmm. This isn't fair. You're not giving me the scholarship because I'm light skinned? But then he tries to pull a light skinned card. So now you're not white anymore. You're light skinned. Huh, how convenient. You were white yesterday. And I love how the tribunal reacts. You are your shit the fuck. You are so white. You but apparently Robert takes it too far by comparing Aaron to Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas. See, I used to know a guy like you back in the day. Mm -hmm. His name was Clarence Thomas. Oh, shit. He got his. We cut to Aaron talking to his dad at home, very upset and accusing the tribunal of being racist. Aaron's dad just thinks it's funny, and while Aaron is scrolling through Instagram, his dad says this. I mean, that's part of being black. Sometimes you don't get the things you know you deserve. So just charge it to the game. At the same time, we see that Aaron's girlfriend is posting about her acceptance letter, is posting her acceptance letter. She tags some black dude in the post with a heart. So Aaron is really worried right now. So he calls his girlfriend and she hits him with the hard truth, saying that she knows he's not going to go to the same college as her and breaks up with him. And the score for this scene is so great. They really played the violins for him, and Aaron was making monkey sounds earlier in the episode to diss black people, but now we can see a monkey poster hangs over him. So Aaron is pissed off and gets online to play the flamethrower game, and he's having flashbacks of the tribunal. So he decides to take the game IRL and Googles how to make a flamethrower, and builds one in his garage. And that thing actually looks kind of dope, not going to lie. He slowly walks to school with it. So when he gets to school, there's a new sign in neon lights for Robert S. Lee High School, and Aaron is about to burn that thing down but he notices another kid also wielding a flamethrower there to do the same thing. The other kid's name is Felix, and he's black. However, he also did not receive a check because the tribunal didn't consider him black either. What are you doing? I'm about to burn this motherfucker down. He said you weren't black too. My parents are from Nigeria. I was born there, but I don't even remember 
from Sony. And this was so funny to me because as I've mentioned in some of my other videos, I'm from Zimbabwe myself, but I have a story very similar to Felix's. Felix really described my experience in high school. I also kind of look like this motherfucker too. And that shit really had me laughing my ass off because a lot of you watching this right now are probably surprised that I'm black. I got people in the comments saying that I'm not black. And because of that, I don't understand the nuances of the show. I mean, whatever. I don't think there's a barrier for entry to understand Atlanta but especially this season is kind of designed for white people and black people to talk about racial issues in America. I still want to stay a bit anonymous on here, but here's a picture of me with my mask on or something. So watching this, I was just really stricken with the conversation that Aaron and Felix had here. You're not really black. You have an entire culture to pull from. You know where you're from, trace your lineage, and you have a country to go home to. You look like fucking Frankie Muniz. I think if I walk down the street in your neighborhood, they're not gonna stop me because I'm African? I have to take the bus here and assemble this shit by the dumpster. But you just walked on over here from everyone. Felix had to assemble his shit in secret while Aaron just walked over. I think this line is made even more outrageous because earlier in the episode, Aaron does say that a walk from home to school is about four miles. And if you miss that bus again, you're walking four miles. But Aaron tells a pro gamer joke and pisses Felix off. What if I burn you first? Oh wait, too late. Was that a dark skin joke? So they start chasing each other around the school with flamethrowers, just like in the game. And this scene must have been fun as hell to shoot. It even looks like they're having a good time while actively trying to murder each other. Aaron tries to camp out like he's done in the game, but ends up catching his feet on fire because his flamethrower is leaking gas. Felix has a high ground and is about to Anakin Skywalker this boy, but before Felix can smoke Aaron, he gets shot by the police. And you know they didn't say freeze first. We cut to Robert showing up to the school, ambulances and fire trucks already on the premises. Robert talks to Felix who is still alive and luckily for him, Robert offers to pay for his medical bills and tuition. Well, before they wheel you away, just know one thing. Getting shot by the police is the blackest thing anybody can do. Make sure he survives, okay? Take him to White Grady. You mean Emery? White Grady. Robert also bribes the EMS to take him to the good hospital and not the one that's known to let black people just pass away. And Aaron is carted off by the police. At the end of the episode, we cut to one year later and we discover that Aaron seems to be pretty fresh out of jail and on probation, working at Best Buy or something. And just look at him. He's been game with the customer when his ex-girlfriend recognizes him and they make some small talk and he drops some game on her too. The episode closes out with Aaron doing this I've never been more attracted to you in my life. <laughs> Hanging on a string plays out the episode, thus completing Aaron's transition from passing as white to embracing his quote unquote black side. So just some closing notes. I really like this episode, and I think it was an excellent addition to the anthology episodes that we have had this season. It ties in very well with the other one-offs. For instance, episode one, when White Ernest says that being white is about where and when you are, White is where you are, it is when you are. It's easy to see the black man is cursed because you've separated yourself from him. And that is shown in this episode with Aaron's conflict of passing as white, but as soon as it became beneficial to be seen as black, he switched up. Also, this might be a big reach, but I can't get it off my mind. When Aaron is scrolling through Instagram, the photo on top is a lake with the hashtag lake life. I don't know if this is a shout out to F1 Lake Lanyard, but for some reason, it just creeped me out when I noticed it. Episode 4, The Big Payback, black people receive reparations while a white guy struggles. In that episode, his wife breaks up with him because she can't let her find to take a hit. I'm Peruvian. This would never happen to me. Per you were white yesterday. Showing that when money is involved, people will gladly switch up. Episode 7, Trini to the Bone. We see little Sebastian spends most of his time with his nanny, Sylvia from Trinidad. Despite being white, Sebastian is embraced by the culture because he grew up around it and embraces it back. His mommy used to say it's better belly bust than good it's food waste. waste. Something that Aaron was not capable of doing. So this episode was fantastic not just because of its great direction and cinematography, but for its stellar performances and layered message. Atlanta is not a show that claims to have answers to the question it raises, but the questions it raises are important. So if we can have a discussion about what it means to be black or white in America while enjoying some great art, I think the showrunners of Atlanta have fulfilled their goal 100%. It's okay if the conversation is a bit uncomfortable. It's supposed to be. It's more about how we work through that uncomfort to grow as individuals. I definitely do love the one-offs, but with one episode left, I feel kind of cheated out of my time with the main cast. I'm very happy that the finale seems 
seems to be largely a Van episode because we haven't gotten enough of her this season. And honestly, the fact that we didn't get a crazy adventure with Darius in Europe is kind of annoying to me. But this season is still living up to my expectations and I am just torn up that we don't have any more episodes to enjoy. But I'm going to leave it at that. Tell me your thoughts on the episode in the comments below. Put mm 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 in your comment and I'll heart it. And really quick, I also made a visualizer for my homie's new song, Upgrade. So I'll be playing out this video with a portion of that song. The link for the song is in the description, so please go check it out and show them some love. Like and subscribe and I'll pay everyone's college tuition no matter what race you are.